Welcome to another edition of Broadcasting on the Beach with Halftime Howie. And in the leadoff segment, he was a Long Beach policeman, firefighter, lifeguard, city council member, assemblyman, icon and legend in Long Beach. We call this the Wiesenberg Perspective. And to talk on the big story of the week, here it is. In Newsday, it's been the big story. Police reject contract. Long Beach Police Union have uh, rejected the contract proposal. And when Harvey was a policeman, he lived in Long Beach. He knew his residents. And it was a different time back then. But to talk about the big issue, police rejecting the contract. We give you the one and only, Harvey Wiesenberg. Harvey. Thank you, Howard. Thank you for the nice introduction. But this is very important to me. Being a former PBA president, representing police officers, you learn to understand, and especially when you, I really believe, have everybody should have life experience in some way in public service. But being a police officer for two years is part of an educational resource. Uh, you'll get an education that you're never going to find in a book. And being a police officer in a small city, and the success that I had as a police officer was because of the fact that I lived in Long Beach. I grew up in Long Beach. I coached midget football and coach. I coached CYO basketball and baseball. So I was so involved with swimming. But every, every child that I worked with knew who I was and the fact that I was a police officer, and that I would always be there to help and be a friend. Every parent knew and respected that me, respected police officers, and how important it is to have knowledge in doing police work, that you have an insight as to what family, who they are, what their good points are, what their needs might be, but you're there to serve and to do good things. You're not there to arrest or punish people, but to help them. And that's what makes for a successful police. It's not how much money you'll make, even though the times have changed, because I believe my salary is about $6,000 a year. Salary today is about $175,000 a year. But money is not the issue. The issue is police and the service that they provide. Take an oath to protect health, life and safety, and property to help people to be there as an assist. One of the greatest thrills that you can have in life is having an opportunity to deliver a child. And it's, it's, it's an interesting life experience, but this happens when you're a police officer. Or go to some home and have somebody pass away in your arms with a parent with a loved one with them. And then you know about the value of life and death and you understand the human aspects that every police officer has an experience that's going to impact his life. You come upon a, a very serious accident. I remember having a, to go and report to a motorcycle accident on Lafayette Boulevard and Park Avenue. And I saw a friend of mine on his motorcycle impact the car, explode and burn to death. That's going to stay with you forever or another serious accident on Monroe Boulevard where we had a car accident and you had to wait for the medical examiner to come and they hand you a cup and say, take to pick up his brains and put them in. These are experiences that police officers have every day. And another issue going back, and I'm talking about 1960, what was the biggest issue, or one of the biggest? Suicide, police suicides. What's one of the big issues today? We lost nine or 10 people in New York City, policemen who took their own lives. So this is a job that you really have to understand. And that's why I say when you have police officers who hire a human being that's going to be there as a public servant and caring. How much money is it necessary to pay? This is not a competition who can make more money. That's just to say you should be happy and appreciate the job that you have and serve the needs of the community. I, I, police officers have to have the standard of living. And by the way, in those days, we switched tours. We changed tours. It was eight to four, four to 12 at night day. 
There's a little different on family life. But today we have a better situation for police officers, and I respect and admire our police officers, but we're lucky. And I'm saying the key to success is to hire people that are going to love the community that they work in, care about it, and know the people that they're taking care of, and the relationship will make your, your job that much easier. So respect and dignity for all people, and that, you know what? The diversity of populists today with minorities, uh, black and white, young and old, I mean, they're polarizing our country, but the, the fact is, police officers serves the needs of all people. So I support our police officers in making sure that they get a, a living wage, but you also have to understand that the financial conditions that have been brought to view, how in the past four years, the city has been taken apart financially by an administration that just didn't do what was appropriate. And that came to view when the controller of the state of New York brought to view the fact that the misdeeds have been done and now there's gonna to have to be a payback. And I don't know if the people can afford to live here unless they be able to control the spending that is necessary to give life and quality of life and care and both financially be able to pay the people that work and serve our city. Our city workers, I've never brought to view that other than the police, our city workers, sanitation, beach maintenance, water and sewer, the people are the hardest working people because they live here and they care about their community and they know who their neighbors are and they do one hell of a job. So I'd like to see all the people that are employed by the city get a living wage. Good luck to our police. Absolutely, Doug. I just want to continue that uh, I know you know Mike Tagney very well, and it points out in the Newsday story that Police Commissioner Mike Tagney said the city would work to restructure the police contract to continue to maintain the city's force rather than pursue a contract with Nassau County Police. So that is vital to making sure that one way or the other they get a, they get a, a, a good, fair contract. Well, let me tell you, thinking about the police, uh, in Nassau County, you know, we have over a million people, of course, and they have different patrol cars. We would have one or two patrol cars here, like they have in the fourth and the first precincts that used to cover Long Beach. But the reality is, our city, who knows our people, uh, we want to have a, a cop on the block. We want a gun on the block, a policeman's gun on the block, the security and the health and safety for an 80 case or whatever. You know that if you have a policeman on your block, you have somebody there you can always go to to support in any kind of condition that may exist. Absolutely. So we want to thank Harvey Riesenberg for his perspective. And for all our concerned citizens, let's hope that uh, a contract can be worked out and that uh, the Long Beach police can get a contract that they feel is fair. For, the, for, for their families, and we can continue having the Long Beach police being there for the city of Long Beach. So thank you so much, Harvey. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity. And you just said it all, Long Beach police living here are best. You know, they get to know who their neighbors are, the people here, the quality of need, and the opportunity to have a friend in every house. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I'm